Russia is a very big country, but which is more important, it's different. So many people in various regions of Russia have different lifestyles, different incomes, different cuisines, cultures, and even, I would say, different mentalities. There are many regions and cities in Russia. Sochi, for example, where it is warm almost throughout the year and people are mostly engaged in touristic sector. There are cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg with the most opportunities for people and they draw the most inner migration in the country. There are regions like Dagestan where parents still choose future husbands and wives for their children and many many other regions with their own culture and traditions. So, my dear friends, today I would like to introduce you the theory of four Russias. Stay tuned. This is St. Petersburg Me channel and my name is Ksenia. And if you want to learn about this theory, please watch this video till the end. We are starting. This theory was introduced in 2012 by Natalia Zubarevich. I have already told you about Natalia in one of my previous videos, but let me remind you. So, Natalia Zubarevich is a Russian uh, economist geographer specializing in uh, the socio-economic development of the Russian regions, and she is the professor of the department of economic and social geography of the Moscow State University. According to Natalia, economically, socially and even politically, Russia can be um, divided or united into four major parts. So, they are. When I say that Russia can be divided, I don't mean that uh, it will be divided into several parts. No, but economically and socially, Russia can um, incorporate various regions in four main parts. Russia number one. Here we speak about cities with one million plus population like Novosibirsk, Omsk, Tomsk, Irkutsk, um, Ufa, uh, St. Petersburg, Moscow and other cities. Those are cities with uh, post-industrial societies, what I mean. So, I mean that uh, people are engaged not only in industrial uh, work, so they w work not only on factories, but they are engaged in such um, industries as service industry, like nails, brows, they are engaged in event industries, they are engaged in tourism sector, and other other industries which are not uh, a part of industrial sector or big uh, plants, big uh, factories, monopolizers of the Russian like market. More and more people in Russia number one are engaged in private businesses, either small or middle scale ones. So not uh, not all the population is engaged in uh, like heavy industries uh, or working at a factory. And there is a tendency among people who live in the biggest cities of Russia to change their job, their places of work once uh, in a while, like once in three, four years, maybe five years, maybe even two years. Um, I can <laughs> I can say so, yeah. <laughs> The Russian middle class is mostly concentrated in such cities and such cities uh, draw the most inner migration. So um, the regional cities like St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk, Irkutsk, Omsk, Tomsk, they um, draw the immigration from these regions to those cities, but Moscow draws migration from all over the country because it's the biggest city, uh, the more opportunities are located there, more job opportunities, more educational opportunities, all of that is located uh, there. 
According to this theory, 31% of the Russian population lives in Russia number one. And you know who is middle class? Those are people with uh, university education, with uh, broad ideas, they are broad-minded, they are open to new, they, are, um, they want to achieve more in their life, they want to uh, develop constantly. So they, of course, move to bigger cities uh, and um, they want to have more opportunities but unfortunately in Russia they don't get those opportunities you know because all the opportunities are concentrated in the uh, hands of uh, a very small group uh, of people in Russia so that's why this uh, these people who live in uh, big cities they are uh, more um, protest prone people uh, they want to achieve more so they want opportunities however not uh, all um, such cities can be ranked as post-industrial cities for example such cities as Talyati, Chelyabinsk, Magnitogorsk they are ranked as um, in industrial cities and they are uh, included into Russia too uh, which I will be speaking about a little bit later. So, in Russia 1, of course, people live uh, better than in uh, other regions, in uh, other Russias. Uh, so, uh, there are more internet users in Russia 1 because they have the opportunity to use internet, they have uh, good internet connection so there are 37 37 million internet users in Russia one however of course not everybody in uh, big cities are middle class of course not there are many many people in big cities who can afford only um, basic things like paying rent paying bills food clothes and that's it my fingers are red my nose is red i got so cold now i'm heading home i don't almost feel my feet <laughs> so Let's continue from, from a little bit warmer place. Natalia also says that in recent years, people who are working in state-owned companies and organizations have uh, joined the middle class in the biggest Russian cities. Those people are um, people who work in security offices, who work in police, uh, school administrations, uh, and other works related to the government. Russia number two includes industrial cities and single industry towns with the population starting from 20 to 250,000 inhabitants and such big cities as Talyati, Cheripovets, Magnitogorsk, Chelyabinsk. The population of these cities is about 25 percent of the whole population of Russia. Those people are mostly engaged in industries they are working in factories and have blue collar jobs their uh, education is not very good very uh, few people have uh, university education and those people prefer to live a soviet style lifestyle you know uh, what is soviet style it's when you get your education higher like university or blue collar job and you uh, find a job and you work <laughs> until you retire on one single factory in one single job or you uh, you develop uh, your career within one uh, one company and then you retire um, before you retire you have kids you have your dacha uh, in March you start planting um, vegetables then you go to vegetable garden and plant uh, those um, 
there. Also, people are engaged in state-owned companies and state-owned organizations in such cities. The solvency of people in Russia number two is quite low. The younger generation of such cities prefer to go to big cities for their studies, for their education, and they um, mainly don't return back. Salaries in such cities are low. People don't get money to buy, you know, extra stuff. They only get money to uh, afford basic stuff like food, clothes, uh, bills and maybe some rent. That's it. Russia number three includes small towns with the population under 20,000 people and villages throughout the country. Those uh, towns and villages are characterized by total absence of uh, good jobs or sometimes people cannot find any jobs. Uh, businesses are very scarce, uh, the salaries are very low, people prefer to move to bigger cities to have the opportunities uh, for better jobs, higher incomes and better opportunities to learn, to develop. People in Russia number three mostly survive with the help of their vegetable gardens. So from March till uh, late October, they're engaged with their dachas growing and planting vegetables for the next winter. Such people are mostly apolitical because the agricultural calendar doesn't depend on who is in power today. With all that I said above, the people who live in Russia number three prefer to vote for the leading party and uh, President Putin just because they don't know anybody else. Because the most of the year they are engaged with their um, vegetable gardens and uh, searches for money, for the source of income. Russia number four includes the republics of North Caucasus and southern Siberia, such as Republic of Tiva, Altai and Buryatia. Uh, those republics account for about 6% of the total population of Russia and those republics are totally subsidized by the federal center. So they get support from Moscow. Those republics don't earn for themselves. Yes, they have big cities uh, as well, but the main drawback is that they don't have the industrial centers, don't have industrial cities where people could get work. The society of these republics are mainly patriarchal and traditional. Thus, they have a very many young people uh, because, you know, if your father uh, tells you to stay with the family, you stay with the family in a, in a traditional society. So, but still, uh, there are more and more young people who prefer to move to big cities outside of the Russian number four, like Moscow, St. Petersburg and other big cities of Russia. So, uh, of course, those um, are mostly agricultural um, regions and they don't provide many work opportunities, many um, educational opportunities. So um, they live a traditional life with uh, many superstitions and many um, Pro prohibits and uh, bans like from the society you know and you know as for me I agree with the, this theory because you know I happened to live in uh, uh, the uh, Russia number two when I moved to Russia from Belarus and in Belarus uh, according to Belarusian standards I lived in Belarus number three in a very very small city with the population under 20,000 people yes of course Belarus is a different country but uh, the way of life 
is uh, quite similar to the Russian uh, way of life. And I can totally understand what it's like to live in a small town um, in Russia. You know, I get a lot of comments from Westerners saying something like, oh, Russia is so good. Russia is so way better than America, Europe or Western countries. Wow, wow, Russia is so good. Of course it's good because as a tourist, you don't get to visit Russia number three. You mainly visit Russia number one and you're astonished at how clean it is, how beautiful it is, how people People live there um, you watch the bloggers you know on YouTube uh, who say that oh just look what I bought oh just look how it is beautiful here on he or here um, because the bloggers who you watch are mostly from Russia one they are well educated they know English very well they are from the middle class, uh, but you don't get to, to see, to visit Russia number three and even Russia number two. And you know, sometimes I get even comments from Russians living in Russia saying that, oh, you are totally lying, you are telling not truth, we don't use vegetable gardens to grow vegetables to survive. You know, but here I understand that if person say so, then it means that he or she is from Russia number one and they don't get to visit Russia number three and even Russia number two because on their vacation they go to Spain not to the village to grow vegetables, you know. They don't know how... Uh, other Russians leave, uh, how Russians who don't live in Moscow or St. Petersburg or in Novosibirsk, how they live, they don't know. That's why they are just, oh, you are lying, you a naughty Russian, you are not a real Russian. Of course, <laughs> I'm not a real Russian because I mostly lived in Russia number three and Russia number two and only the last 10 years 12 years I'm living in Russia number one so so my dear friends that is all for today that is all that I wanted to tell you in this video thank you for watching thank you for subscriptions for uh, sharing my content my videos and I remind you that I have memberships on my channel and if you want to communicate with me in a more close way please choose one of the five tiers and join our memberships uh, so um, thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being with me the comment section is below so my dear friends see you in the next video bye